Alright, what's going on guys? Try back again. I'm here to bring you another video. This one's going to be doing a video giving my thoughts and doing a review on the after credits scene from the Wolverine. Okay, and obviously this one will contain spoilers, so for anyone who's worried about me ruining what happens, uh, I just can't really do an analysis and review, give my thoughts on what happens after the credits in the Wolverine without really spoiling for you. So, uh, those of you who have not seen it yet, worried about that, and are big time fans, um, you may not want to watch this video. So, uh, basically the purpose of this video is to give my thoughts on what happens after the credits and, and talk a little bit about Days of Future Past and the tie-in. So probably the coolest part in all of the Wolverine, um, maybe aside from the battle at the end, maybe aside from the uh, the train battle, which is pretty damn cool too, or the ninjas, uh, the battle with the ninjas, which I, I love a lot too, uh, but I was hoping Wolverine would have done a little bit better against the army of ninjas with their, with their arrows and and hooks and everything that they were able to use against them to subdue him. Um, this scene was probably the coolest scene in the entire movie. Uh, I mean, who would not get, <clears throat> who's an X-Men fan that would not get chills down their spine when they see Magneto and Professor X roll out, you know? Um, so, of course, to go through it, Wolverine is at an airport getting ready to set off the uh, metal detectors to all hell, and... Um, he notices that some of the metal objects in the vicinity, coins and things of that nature, are starting to, to float upwards and uh, turns around and of course he sees Magneto there, who then basically tells him, well, we have a commercial just beforehand playing of Trask Industries, uh, obviously tying into the comic books that uh, we're going to be seeing some Sentinels. Finally, an X-Men movie with Sentinels. Yes, the X-3 uh, sort of... Um, uh, Easter egg of Wolverine in the danger room cutting off the giant sentinel's head and it kind of falling down it was kind of cool uh, to a degree but you know the sentinels are like a key you know X-Men villain I guess you could call it or at least Trask is that we we've never seen before in the movies so it makes perfect sense that we would you know be seeing them in Days of Future Past or any of these types of types of movies in the future they want to do that in Apocalypse they still have not done Apocalypse yet so I want to see Sentinels, for sure. That's awesome. You can't go wrong with that because we haven't seen them yet. And I want to see, eventually, Apocalypse in an X-Men movie. And then I'll be satisfied. Once we see that, I'll be satisfied with the X-Men Fox uh, cinematic universe. Uh, so anyway, uh, so you got Trask. He's starting up with the Sentinel thing. Loving that. Really excited for that. Basically, Magneto telling Wolverine that he wants his help. Wolverine saying, go F yourself, essentially. And then you see Professor X roll in as everything freezes. So how could this be? How could Professor X still be alive? How could he be in his old form and his old body? Well, I'm not necessarily... Um, what, here's what I think, okay? Being a big fan of X-Men and, and, and watching the, uh, the animated series at least five times over every episode, reading the comic books pretty much my entire life, uh, most... Uh, of the 90s X-Men comics I've read all the way through, um, the Grant Morrison new X-Men, read all that, and up to most of the recent stuff too. Um, I think that that is an astral projection of Professor X, okay? So because one of the things that they have not explored yet in the uh, cinematic universe is just how powerful Professor X is. Does he even necessarily need a body or a mind to exist on the astral plane? This is something that they explore in the comic book series, which is that telepaths that have the power and the ability of Professor X and Gene, you know, they are able to exist on the astral plane. Their, their consciousness is able to even surpass their bodies and, and stay alive even after. Now, uh, it did seem like at the end of X3, Professor X had transferred his consciousness into the body of that man that was basically just a, a flat out shell body and his, his mind had no function or anything of the sort. And uh, they also set it up nicely because in X3, he's also talking to his students and he's talking a little bit about that, saying, is it wrong? You know, what are the ethics, the morals involved in this type of thing? Uh, so just before uh, Gene basically vaporized them, caused them to explode into a bazillion pieces, uh, <laughs> he, it seems like from X3, he transferred his consciousness into the body of this other man. So he may be operating out of that man's body, maybe staying alive as a result of, of that man's body in X3, that one that he, he transferred to. But then his, uh, his actual physical self that we see in the post credit scene, which I believe will also occur in the um, Days of Future Past, 
is actually a mental projection of himself, but to the people around, he seems totally, completely himself because he's actually engaging with their minds on the astral plane, which is something that we've seen with the Shadow King in the books and these, these types of things that he is, he is that powerful of a telepath that he's able to use his mind from that plane to communicate with, um, with others and even to the point where he can actually, um, you know, when he goes, there's certain parts of the comic series where uh, the Shadow King and things like this, he may go rogue and um, he'll be battling on the astral plane with him and his body may be taken over and different things will happen and basically he'll become, you know, such a powerful villain when he, if he is to lose to the Shadow King and terrorize all the people he knows around them. So, you know, you get into this whole thing, which is really interesting because we have not seen that in the cinematic universe yet. Um, but, you know, when you, when you deal with a telepath that is of his level, of his caliber, which is probably the most powerful on Earth, um, yeah, I would say so, in their universe. I'm talking, of course, in their universe. None of this is realistic. We don't know if there is such a thing as the astral plane. You know, people can debate about consciousness and all these things and what it is and is it just a product of the brain? Is there something more to it? You know, uh, and then you get into the whole religious debate and all these things. But in the X-Men universe, comic book universe, that is basically Professor X has that type of ability that he's able to uh, project himself from the astral plane even to the so to the point where from people they will see him and for what purpose I would think to protect mutants uh, I would think that his purpose for still existing in that level um, on that level and still engaging with the people he knows is to protect the ones he loves and cares about the mutants his, his students his family you know all these different types of characters and not only that but uh, kind of interesting too to think along the same lines is that some of the scenes in X-Men when Wolverine's dreaming and these types of things could those actually be Jean projecting herself from, from the astral plane or the afterlife or these types of things because she is that powerful that her consciousness may still be out there in some degree and she may be contacting Logan while he's sleeping and he's battling his inner demons and these types of things are happening. So with that sort of concept, that kind of idea taken from the comic book series, lots of exciting things can happen because you could really bring back Gene to a degree, you know, uh, of that level. Professor X, you could bring him back entirely because he is you could say that mentally with with the astral projection he's going to be on the astral plane he's going to be better at that than Jean would be she may be able to contact people while they're sleeping uh, with her consciousness but Professor X would be able to essentially live on just from his consciousness operating from the body of that other man um, so you know I think all of these different uh, ideas are interesting they fit with with X-Men it all fits with X-Men so that's my interpretation of why Professor X is there why his body is still intact it's not actually it's not real it's, it's, it's a projection of himself from the astral plane that's what I think anyway that's my interpretation of the after credit scene and I am buzzing for Days of Future Past I think Days of Future Past will be even better than uh, The Wolverine was. Because, I mean, The Wolverine was a great movie and everything. Don't get me wrong, I enjoyed it very much because I love Wolverine as a character. But it just makes you crave seeing all the X-Men together again. Seeing Professor X, Wolverine, Magneto, Mystique, you know, all the rest. Uh, Cyclops looks like they may have a new actor for him coming in. And maybe he didn't die after all. So it seems like they're really going to fix the X-Men franchise after the disaster that X3 seemed to be at the time killing off all these important characters. Jean dies, yeah, you can kill Jean because in the comic book she dies too. You probably should at some point. It should happen. But Professor X, you know, without Professor X can you really have an X-Men? Without Cyclops can you really have an X-Men? You have Wolverine and the X-Men? I don't know. I don't know. For me, my X-Men is, you know, Jean, if she's dead or alive, whatever, at least she impacts the story. Cyclops, Professor X, and Wolverine, that's my X-Men. I know there's lots of different versions of the team, but that's who I think of as the X-Men. So, anyway, those are my thoughts on the after the credits scene, my interpretation of it. Hope you guys uh, enjoyed it, and uh, I'm going to do a video talking about Days of Future Past, I think. Just generally giving my thoughts on the movie, because I think it's going to be amazing. Uh, and I love the X-Men, obviously, so <clears throat> got to do that. Anyway... Uh, I'll call it here. Uh, let me know what you guys thought about the after the credit scene, the Wolverine, and how excited are you for Days of Future Past? Mo my most anticipated movie of 2014, Days of Future Past now. Has to be. Has to be. Okay, that's it for this video, guys. I'll see you for the next one. This is Trevin. I'm saying peace.